Yeah. Hi everyone. Uh, today we will see uh, what is protocol in clinical trial. So let us understand today the basic concepts of clinical trial and uh, what a protocol is in a clinical trial and why it is required. So what is protocol? Now it is nothing but a document that describes how a clinical trial will be conducted, organized, implemented, executed, analyzed and reported. It also consists of the study objective or the study objectives, the study design, the study methodology, the statistical assumptions and their considerations. This document also ensures the safety of clinical trials, subjects and integrity of the data collected. Now, the very first question will come, what is protocol? Now, it's a document uh, where uh, it will consider each and every um, thing that happens in a clinical trial and that will not happen even in a clinical trial. So, and this protocol, it needs to be approved by certain ethics committee members, which will be assigned and their approval will be required in order to conduct this protocol. Now, unless and until you have a protocol, you cannot conduct a clinical trial, especially in the CRO and the pharma industry. This protocol is nothing but your base and the foundation uh, from which you will consider a step-by-step -step process in conducting a clinical trial. Now, there will be various stakeholders will be involved in protocol development. The very first thing will be your principal investigator, right? Second would be your clinical monitoring team. Third would be your database designer team or the data management team. Then you will have clinical team, which are your doctors and the medical people. Then you will have a team of statisticians or like it would be right to say as biostatistician uh, in a clinical trial where their presence is required uh, to give their inputs in developing this protocol. Then you will also require a team of a person of a programmer, SAS programmer or a statistical programmer, so that even if that person wants to give their inputs or review the protocol, so that can also be considered. Then it will involve a team of pharmacists who will be conducting your laboratory parameters or conducting those. And the other would be your team uh, audit report, like say the quality team. So your quality assurance, what I would like to uh, use as a correct frame. So that quality assurance team, uh, that team will ensure that the protocol is followed in quality and assure that whatever steps and the information that is written, it falls under your uh, prescribed way of uh, designing a clinical trial as per the ICH guidelines. Then you will have also another team as a reporting team who will who will collate all this uh, kind of reporting structure how we are going to do it so now a protocol is not developed by a single person right it is developed through multiple stakeholders giving their contribution giving their inputs uh, for designing a protocol. So say for example, a biostatistician will give uh, the specific inputs and the specific um, requirements or assumptions or the statistical techniques or the statistical methods or the statistical designs, how uh, is the best fit for a specific uh, clinical trial 
uh, for this therapeutic area in this therapeutic uh, area so biostatistician has to sit with the clinical team to understand uh, what is the study objective whether it's to reduce or to decrease or to see the equivalence of two treatments whether it's a single arm or a double arm or it's a it's a it's an open label study so all these kind of uh, considerations a uh, biostatistician has to sit with uh, the other stakeholders to understand uh, what is the business requirement and only then the biostatistician would be able to provide their inputs and provide their uh, uh, sections uh, that needs to go in this protocol correct similarly let's say you will be having a clinical pharmacokinetics team so they will give information related to pharmacokinetics of this molecule so that would be let's say based through literature through some research so that is the job of their uh, team who will be uh, developing this protocol so this document is not prepared by one person but it is in coordination in collaboration in in understanding each other's requirements only then the successful protocol can be developed uh, it could be so that only one person is the in charge of uh, developing the protocol uh, uh, a specific person but that person has to has to sit and collect information with various stakeholders so that he can add the respective inputs uh, in that protocol after uh, taking uh, written confirmation from a biostatistician or a doctors or a medical team or a laboratory person as to how the laboratory parameters uh, are captured and they will be analyzed in the protocol then that person has to uh, sit with uh, some other uh, team members to ensure that whatever the uh, the information is written in the protocol it follows your ICH guidelines clear so let's uh, move to another slide okay so this is the covering page which mentions the sponsor name your protocol number the clinical study title the author uh, date version or the CRO name if it is prepared by a CRO representative now what do you mean by sponsor sponsor is nothing but that person who is investing his own money in doing the research and development for a specific mole molecule to launch in the market to get the cure for a specific disease and to ensure that the patients um, they are treated and they are cured after this medicine is launched so it's a very uh, big kind of a period it takes around 20 to 20 years for a molecule to launch in the market and gets its approval through various agencies government agencies so sponsor is nothing but that person who has involved his own money so that he is trying to develop a molecule and he is trying to um, make some profit out of like you know uh, by preparing a molecule or a medicine for a specific therapeutic uh, disease uh, in this pharma industry now what is CRO CRO is nothing but your contract research organization who uh, who gets a business from a sponsor for conducting that clinical trial or it could only be uh, doing the statistical analysis section or it could be doing only the data management section or it could be both data management as well as statistics so there are various stakeholders involved uh, in preparing the protocol so all those stakeholders who all those are involved in that clinical study you need to take their names their signature their designation and you have to take their inputs and uh, you have to document each and everything that happens 
and even all those things you need to document that doesn't happen in a clinical trial, right? Now, second page, like I said earlier, it would be your sponsor's approval date, at which date it was approved, the designation of that person uh, who is a representative or a sponsor, their person specific name. So if anything happens um, or any damage happens in a bad uh, protocol, that sponsor is, uh, is contacted even if a clinical trial fails or it doesn't follow any any ICH guidelines or any other kind of uh, uh, rules and regulations then at least their name designation and date and their signature has to be present so if it is prepared by a CRO representative then that's person's name designation signature and what specific date everything has to be documented and this protocol is also reviewed by the certain ethics committee and uh, uh, in coordination with everybody's agreement only then this protocol can happen and without this protocol a clinical travel can never be executed and it can never be implemented no matter even if it goes to various amendments so all those amendments uh, and needs to be documented like say for example the first draft was prepared by someone then you saw some changes that uh, needs to be done so the first amendment second amendment even after the final version of the protocol is released and when the clinical trial has already started then at that stage even if someone uh, realizes uh, from the stakeholders that we we need certain changes in protocol or we need some amendment so that amendment goes as one or amendment two and whatever changes that happens in the protocol it needs to be informed to each and every team be it medical monitoring team, be it the bar statistician team, be it the statistical programming team, be it the quality assurance team, be it the reporting reporting team who will be doing the report. So all the stakeholders, they have uh, the correct and the right information that this amendment is present in the protocol and please ensure to follow it wherever it is applicable so that there is no kind of chaos at the end of the study where nobody is informed about their amendment um, and at the last minute uh, the programmer team realizes that oh this amendment was done at so and so date but i wasn't informed so it really affects the programming and the biostatistics uh, team if you are not aware of such amendments or changes in the protocol. So it is very essential for the person who is the author of the protocol to ensure that he, he gives the uh, right and the correct information to all the stakeholders that are involved in a clinical trial, right? Okay, so let us see what are the contents of protocol. Now, the protocol synopsis will include the objective, uh, then the study design, then the study population, your dosage and administration, the PK evaluation, the safety evaluation, the statistical methods. This section will be given by a bar statistician. The time and events schedule uh, that can be uh, given by the principal investigator in coordination with your doctors and clinicals as to when, uh, at which stage the laboratory parameters should be collected. So all those information, you know, the doctors and the medical people they'll be having and what kind of abbreviations are used. So the study objective, primary objective, secondary objective, assessment of objectives. Now these kind of situ these kind of information can come in collaboration uh, with principal investigator, sponsor, then biostatistician, clinical team, where everybody uh, should know uh, what is the study objective, right? So third is the background of that specific molecule. Now what is a study agent study agent is nothing but your molecule so what is the molecule history or the molecule background then 
has that molecule gone through non clinical studies nowadays uh, we do have a phase 0 kind of uh, clinical trial where it involves uh, the non clinical studies that happens especially in animals now the best example would be mice or the rats they use for conducting your pk and uh, understanding the toxicology of a specific molecule while performing uh, those studies on non-clinical studies especially in mice or rats right then you will be having the study design then you will be having your study disease so like say for example i have i have a diabetes kind of a study so what is this disease related right so you'll have this disease related information then you will have the phase one studies phase two studies then the treatment interaction trial then you will have pharmacokinetics then the safety and tolerability and then what is the rational reason so if this study has gone through phase one and phase two studies and this study is going to be next in the phase three study then you have to give a little bit background as to uh, uh, what is this molecule gone through in phase one what were its uh, results and what was considered the same thing will go in phase two and phase three studies and the specific uh, rational reason behind it looking into the pharmacokinetics safety and the tolerability next is the overview of study design the investigation plan then the pharmaceutical information the clinical evaluations the procedures that are followed uh, in clinical perspective so all these things uh, the clinical person or the doctorate will give you then you will have the study monitoring so how the study will be monitored at what stage if it's having a multi-center uh, study so at which centers which sites your monitoring team is going to be present and how it will be collected so all these things needs to be present the statistical considerations like i said earlier statistical assumptions the statistical considerations like the sample size calculation then when the sap will be released then uh, what kind of uh, what is the what is the major uh, primary endpoints what are the major secondary endpoints that's it you don't need to present in detail the primary and the secondary endpoint all those uh, detail section that you need to write in your statistical analysis plan in protocol you will mention only the considerations what you are uh, mentioning your assumptions how you calculated sample size whether it is uh, assumed or it has been calculated or that sample size has been given by a sponsor to recruit so many numbers then you will have uh, only a gist only the outline of statistical uh, methods and technologies in detail you will mention everything uh, in statistical analysis plan by a power statistician the protocol amendments like i said earlier if the protocol has reached to the final stage no issues you you realize after initiating the protocol that you might have to make certain amendments in a clinical trial it's possible but then you have to make it as an amendment or a note to file and circulate uh, within the entire study team study team can be from data management from statistics or from programming team or from quality assurance or from principal investigator or they could be uh, they could be some person with uh, doctors or medical teams or pharmacist or the laboratory or the external vendors so even if you have an external vendor and uh, that person also should be informed what all kind of amendments are happened in a protocol then the responsibilities of investigators now this kind of uh, toc it's just an example it's not that hard and fast rule <laughs> that you have to follow this pattern it's just a basically a, a definition or an example to explain you what all protocol contents for initiating a clinical trial right so 
this is just the basic and concepts of understanding of what a protocol is what it contains and what is its role and significance of uh, having this uh, protocol and unless and until you have this you cannot start a clinical trial that is for sure so this is a very important and the initial stage of a molecule uh, to go through uh, uh, for conducting any clinical trial is that right so here I would like to thank each and every one of you for uh, watching my video and stay tuned uh, to my channel for exciting videos and hopefully in coming days I will be uploading new videos uh, for the pro programming uh, concepts so as and when I get time I'll keep posting it so stay tuned to my channel thank you